Bob was shooting some of the fastest motorcyclists and motorcycles around India with the Canon EOS R3. It is now time to edit the footage and the photos and get them to all the petrolheads that are following me on social media. And some of the photos will also go in the XBHP print magazine. So here is how I edit my stuff, both photos and videos. Quick run through of my workflow. So right now I am in my motor cave and the first thing that I do is of course to copy all the photos on the computer. And then I fire up an image viewer which is fast and renders all the raw thumbnails very quickly. Fast Stone Image Viewer for Windows is one such viewer. It is extremely efficient in rendering all the thumbnails very quickly because the Canon EOS R3 actually shoots 30 images per second at RAW. And that is a lot of data. After I have selected all the RAW photos in a folder, I open the whole folder up in Canon Digital Photo Professional for basic touch-up. And then I export it to Photoshop as TIFF for more advanced color touch-ups using filters like Nick Pro. These photos then get watermarked and uploaded to my social media or in print resolution for the XBHP print magazine. One great thing about the Canon EOS R3 is that you can also shoot 4K RAW video. That means that I can also extract photos from videos. So sometimes it is not possible to shoot a video and photos at the same time. But the thing with the Canon EOS R3 is that it can also shoot 6K RAW videos and it is very helpful if you want to extract a photo from the video. Now it's time to do videos, 4K videos, 4K 120 FPS videos to be precise. Now I have a short list ready which has a script so it ensures that I don't miss out anything on the field. Plus I am also doing voiceovers for my videos so that is also ready to be imported. And then I fire up Premiere Pro once I have all my videos sorted out in folders which are ready to drop and import into Premiere so that it can create the bins which are already sorted the way I want. 4K videos can really bog down your computer. So what I do is create proxies. It is a very helpful tool. And when the proxies are being created, I also take time to actually choose the music the way I want it. So I've got a couple of subscriptions, online subscriptions which help me choose the music the exact way I want basis on genre, mood and other things I want the video to feel like. That using these subscriptions, they prevent you from getting any copyright strikes whatsoever. So now what I do is basically create a new sequence with my voiceover in it. And then I put the footage in the order of appearance in the script on the voiceover. And then I finally add the music. And when there is no voiceover, I use my music to basically act as filler segments by using transitions which match the music and of course the video. 120 frames per second in 4K is a delight to work with. I mean, I just drag and drop the video and it gives me so much freedom to actually recompose this if you're making a full HD video. And uh, you know, you can also just use scale to frame size and you get a lot more sharpness in the final output when you have such so many pixels to play with and the thing with this is that you can also do speed ramping the way you want it i do shoot in c log so which means that i have extreme freedom in how i want the video to look by applying lut's to an adjustment layer but one of the most important things which i think people ignore is that once you do the whole video you think it's final you need to export it and watch it on a small and a big screen so that all the niggles you can actually iron it out and further polish it. 